discussed yesterday. You remember one of them? Fratsha Prima. Please. Yeah, so they do not approach the Supreme Lord as a Supreme Personality of Godhead. That they don't see the Lord's opulences. We will discuss that also further today. Another characteristics, yeah? Yes, that was the, the first point that uh, the Vrachavasis, they control Krishna with their love. And there was a third point. Association yeah, that's about the process, right? Mm. To get Vratsha Prema, where one must associate with pure devotees, that uh, that's the most important. Yeah. yeah the, best the best yogis, yes. They, their mind cannot be deviated even from a moment of Krishna. She just can't forget him. <laughs> at any moment. And the greatest yogis, yogis, they try to fix their mind on, on Krishna, the super soul, with great, great effort, but they cannot get rid of Krishna. <laughs> Always so deeply absorbed. So ab about this, yeah, like Nanda Maharaj, this is in um, Tenth Canto, after Krishna was for some time in Mathura, he sent Udav to Vrindavan to console the Vrajavasis. And when he arrived there in the evening, a very nice atmosphere. He was welcomed by Nanda Maharaj. Mother Yasoda did, come, did not come out of the house. She was always crying that uh, she didn't... Uh, it didn't look up, <laughs> was always crying and her head down. And, and Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj, yeah, you could see that he was very much affected by Krishna's absence. And so interesting is the Udav was thinking, they are suffering so much from separation from Krishna. So, I will try to take, to bring their, to make their prema more intense, to let, to let it come down. Then, then they, they will not suffer so much. So, Udav started to explain to Nanda Maharaj, that Krishna is the supreme personality of God. He is the controller of the universe, he is in everyone's heart, in every atom. That, uh, and he went on for some time. But it had no effect on Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj said to Udav, I forgive you. You are much younger than me. I know, I know Garya Muni has said that my son is equal to Narayan, that, that, and that we have to take care of him nicely. But he said that uh, my son is not Narayan. I know Narayan. We are, we are worshipping every day in Arayan, the Sala, or Salagam Silla, that, uh, that uh, but, but Narayan is Satya Sankalpa. 
It speaks always the truth. That uh, is pure transcendental goodness. But my Krishna, he lies. He lies and he steals. How can he be Narayan? That, uh, and uh, when I say to Krishna, bring my shoes, then he brings my shoes. That, and if we don't feed him in time, then he becomes angry. So, how can he be Narayan? No, Krishna is my son. So that's the Vajravasis. They have all their rasa. And with that rasa, together is a stai bhav. And the stai bhav means continued ecstasy. That uh, in a certain mood. And their stai bhav is parental love. They see Krishna as their son. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda. That... Uh, so that is, mm -hmm. they don't see Krishna's opulence. The same thing happened many years later. This we find in chapter 82 of the 10th canto. There was the solar eclipse. The solar eclipse at Kokshatra that and yes they went all the Vrachavasis all the residents from Dvarka they went all to Kokshatra to see Krishna that uh, but when the Vrachavasis arrived they kept first themselves a little they kept a little distance from this Tvarkadashis, from, from this residence of Dvarka. But then Vasudev, Vasudev saw Nanda and Yasoda and, the Vraj, and all the Vrajavasis. Because when they arrived, when Krishna arrived, it was announced. Krishna, the, the son of, of Vasudeva, has arrived. <laughs> but for Nanda Maharaj, he was thinking that that's some common mistake. <laughs> that, uh, so, Vasudeva, when they saw Nanda and Yasoda, they let them into his tent while they were handing, holding Krishna's hands. The hands of Krishna and Balaram. And also, Rohini came inside the tent, an older man of Raj, and a, a number of other, other Vrajavasis. But inside, Nanda and Yasoda took, the, do, took the, the two boys on their laps. They were already grown up, <laughs> but for them it was just their six-year-old son. That, uh, so, despite having heard the glories of the two lords of Dvarka, Krishna and Balaram, and despite seeing all the opulence before their eyes, because Krishna and Balaram were dressed as princes and that's royal, that... Uh, that they looked upon them like they were their eight-year-old children. <laughs> that uh, this is, in the Bhagavatam it is said, raising their two sons on, onto their laps and holding them in their arms, Nanda and saintly Mother Yasoda forgot their soul. That uh, separation was over. That. Uh, 
So their prema could not be conquered by Krishna's opulences. They saw all this this wealth of the of the Dvarka, Dvar, of the residence of Dvarka, all this Ashvarya, that uh, they saw it in front of them, but they 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 they, they didn't see Ashvarya Krishna. They didn't see Krishna with all these opulences. They saw Madhurya Krishna, a sweet Krishna. They saw the Krishna of Vrindavan. It didn't matter what Krishna did in Vrindavan or or what what he was wearing. For them, it it was just their little son. In Nectar of the Devotion, there is a description of the meeting with Mother Yasoda and Krishna at Kurukshetra. Interesting, when Mother Yasoda arrived, then all, all, all the queens of Krishna from the Varka went to see them, and they wanted to talk to Mother Yasoda. But Mother Yasoda, out of ecstasy of seeing Krishna, she was always crying, crying, and she didn't reply to anything. <laughs> And they, they just they just gave up. <laughs> you cannot talk with her. That uh, this is a connector of devotion, chapter forty three. When Krishna arrived at Kurukshetra, all the people assembled there began to say, Krishna, the son of Devaki, has arrived. At that time, Devaki, just like an affectionate mother, began to pat Krishna's face. And again, when people cried that Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, had come, both King Nanda and Mother Yasoda became overwhelmed with affection and expressed their great pleasure. When Mother Yasoda, the queen of Gokul, was going to see her son at Kokshetra, one of her friends addressed her thus. My dear queen, the milk flowing out of your breast mountain has already whitened the river Ganges, and the tears from your eyes mixed with black mascara have already blackened the color of the Yamuna. And as you are standing just between two rivers, I think there is, there is no need for your anxiety to see your son's face. Your parental, parental affection has already been exhibited by these two rivers, quite an image. Hmm? The same friend of Mother Yasoda addressed Krishna as follows, My dear Mukunda, if Mother Yasoda, the queen of Gokul, is forced to stand on fire but is allowed to see your lotus face, then this fire will appear to her like the Himalaya mountains, full of ice. In the same way, if she is allowed to stay in the ocean of nectar, but is not allowed to see the lotus feet of your grace, then even the, ne- the ocean of nectar will appear to her like an ocean of arsenic poison. Let the anxiety of Mother Yasoda of Raj always be glorified all over the universe. So... Why was Mother Yasoda so anxious to see Krishna? Because she wanted to make sure that he's eating, that he's happy. That, uh, so that about Mother Yasoda. Now interesting is, the gopis, they went also to, the, to, to Kurukshetra. And Gopal Champan from, from Chiva Goswami, he described their journey. And that's interesting to hear. We, we heard yesterday that, yes, this, the sy- symptoms of liberation, a liberated person was described by Krishna to Udav as a drunken man. A drunken man, a drunken man does not know whether he wears clothes or not. That um, we will see how they are just 
not conscious of the body, always concentrating their mind on Krishna. So it was in the early morning they left Vrindavan on their journey to Kurukshetra. The journey of the Vrachavasis. What I'm going to read, that you, we don't hear in the Bhagavatam, <laughs> these details. It's interesting. The chest of Braj people quivered in un anticipation of seeing Krishna. So the, their body, whole body was quivering. They were going to see Krishna. That... Uh, they gave bliss to all eyes because their hair stood on end and they were drenched with tears because their teeth cl cluttered from trembling, their words became un unintelligible. So they spoke words, but you could not understand it because their, their, their teeth were always <laughs> <laughs> out of ecstasy. So that is how the Brajavasis were going to Kokshatra. Their teeth were shuttering, and so they could not speak. That, uh, because, Chief Goswami writes, because many thoughts appeared and disappeared, they were constantly in confusion. They acted externally like realized soul, but internally they considered everything illusory because of the bliss of seeing Krishna constantly. So these are self-realized souls. I read it again. They acted calm externally like realized souls, but internally they considered everything illusory because of the bliss of seeing Krishna constantly. Their bodies Thin because of for forgetting to sleep or eat. So these Vrachavasis, they were always serving Krishna, always thinking of Krishna, and they just forget, forgot to sleep and to eat. <laughs> no time. That, uh, they were always serving Krishna. Even those who didn't know Krishna and who disrespected him went along. Somehow, they all went to Kokshatra. Yeah. And now, this is on, on the way to, <laughs> to Kokshatra. Nanda and others smelt Krishna's fragrance, although Krishna was not present. So, interesting. They are on the way. Krishna is not there, but they are smelling his fragrance. So first they smelt, they smelt him when they went to Kokshetra. <laughs> when they came closer, Krishna was there with his royal retinue. So this was not a Krishna of Vrindavan, but dressed very opulent. So when Krishna and Balaram heard that the people of Raj were near, they reverted to their coward mode. Interesting. They went back to their coward mode, although they were dressed as princes. Their minds, their minds melting because of wanting to serve with devotion, they went to meet them, but they could not move quickly. So Krishna and Balaram sent the assembled kings to separate camps with an excuse. So... Jiva Goswami said the reason for that is that Krishna was thinking, my enemies do not know that I'm fr friend with the people of Raj. Because if they would know that, then they would give trouble to them. So he sent them away. For this reason, to Udav, he placed Nanda Maharaj and the others in an isolated place where he could console them in private. After leaving aside those who were not relatives, Krishna and Balaram, along with relatives, went to meet the people of Braj. From far off, they offered respect on the ground to Nanda, 
with reference. Nanda's body began to shake, filled with tears, and his hair standing on end. Nanda embraced both at once and cried with a choked voice and unsteady mind. Krishna and Balaram wanted to embrace him, but because all the people present, they offered respect on the ground at Nanda's feet. So there were too many people around. Though Nanda wanted to relieve them of the fatigue of offering respects because of lack of control of his emotions, his hands could not move properly. He just looked here and there, and then he saw Vasudev and others who said, May you live long. Nanda and his group remained reserved. However, the kings Krishna sent away were friendly kings because Krishna wanted to meet with the relatives only. Hmm. So, Nanda Maharaj Yasoda. In the Nectar of Devotion, uh, nine personalities mentioned who enjoyed parental affection towards Krishna. And they are put on in, in sequence, beginning with the most, the one who had the most parental affection for Krishna. So who had the most parental affection for Krishna in Vrindavan, in Vrindavan Dvarka? Yeah, Mother Yasoda. Yes. And who is the second one? Please? Roini. You say Roini. That uh, in act of devotion, the second is Nanda Maharaj. And the third is Roini. Roini is very special because she was in Vrindavan, but also in the Dvarka pastimes. That, uh, yeah, Roini, the mother of Balaram. And then on the fourth place, what do you think? Well, who comes after Roini? Please? Balaram, that he had also a parental affection, but it's not mentioned in the list here. That, uh, but that's true. He had a mixture with friendship and parental love. He was the older son. But the fourth one, that's interesting. When during the Brahma Mohan Lila, Moha Lila, then Brahma took away the coward boys and Krishna expanded them in, in all the coward boys and then went back to the village. And for a year, one year, he uh, became the son of all these copies. <laughs> that, uh, so the elderly gopis of Raj, whose son was stolen by Lord Brahma, because, of course, they got the Lord as their child. So that's the fourth place. Then the fifth one, I think. Now we are not in Vrindavan anymore. We need Dev Devaki. Yeah, Devaki. And the sixth one, fast if comes a little later. In the sixth place, because um, Devaki had 15 co-wives. And these co-wives of Devaki comes on the sixth place. And then the seventh. That uh, seventh, yeah. First canto, chapter eight. Queen Kunti. Yeah, Queen Kunti. She's the seventh. And then on the eighth place is Vasudev. 
finally thus they've got on the eighth place. And the ninth place is Sandi Pani Muni, his goal. That uh, that's mentioned, mentioned nectar of devotion. Of course, Balaram is mixed is Sakyam. Roini was in both pastimes, Vrindavan, Dvarka. She's Balaram's mother. That means Roini was practically equal to Yasoda. She took equal care of Krishna. Because it's a joint family. Today, if you have you have the nuclear family, but, but that's different. That uh, so they all accepted Krishna as their son. That uh, mm -hmm. so it was a family family re reunion. Also, Subhadra was there, the daughter of Devaki and Vasudeva. It's all one. All the children were there. Um, that uh, we see also when Pradyumna was the son of Krishna in Dvarka, but, but Prad Pradyumna called, called also Balaram his father. <laughs> That's interesting. That, uh, so now we uh, also the gopis arrived at Gokshatra. And now they are getting the moment they were waiting for for years, seeing Krishna face to face. Hmm. So their spiritual absorption is much more intense than the practitioners of Dharma or the Jnanis or the Yogis that... Uh, this is from Lalita Mata, Madhava. So, one of these two dramas written by Rupa Goswami, that Lalita Madhava. And there you have Purnamasi, she's chastising the gopis. She says, you are so unfortunate that you are trying to get rid of Krishna from your mind. You try to get rid of Krishna from, him from your mind. Great yogis, they try to meditate on him, and you are trying to get rid of him. That, anyway, that's the gopis. That. Because when Krishna appears in the gopis' mind, then that form in their mind is non different from Krishna. That. Uh, of course, for us also, but we don't realize that. If we chant Krishna's names, it is Krishna. But it takes a while for us to realize. <clears throat> so, also Nectar of the, the, this Nectar of Devotion describes this scene. When they saw Krishna at Kukshatra, the gopis, their breathing, the blinking of their eyes, and all similar activities, they stopped. They stopped breathing. They stopped blinking their eyes. They stood before Krishna just like statues. That, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have... This is from Sarta Darshini about the gopis. That is Vishwanachaka Vartitaku's commentary on the Bhagavatam. Although they had the highest respect for everyone and for any demigod, they cursed the chief of all the demigods. Who is the chief of all the demigods? Hmm? Brahma. Here it's mentioned. Here it's directed to Brahma. Such was the intolerance of their separation from seeing Krishna. It was Brahma, but Vishwanasakavartita Kaur says, this implies anger at Krishna for the separation from him. 
because he is the ultimate creator. Although they are so called cursing Brahma, it was directed to Krishna, Vishwana, Srivakta, Kurusa. Pulling Krishna with their glances, with eyes as doorways, eyes as doorways, to let him in. <laughs> eyes as. That, and, and they are pulling Krishna with their eye, glances. So, the love of the Vajravasis means they control Krishna. <laughs> that their eyes become doorways. And with their glances, they attract Krishna to get to the door. That, um, and to the door, so that they can enter their, their, in, in their heart, so that they can embrace him. That's the strategy. <laughs> And when they embraced him, they attained Rar Mahabhav. So there are seven stages of Prema. Hmm? That's seven stages. That uh, this Pranaya, Mana, Palaya, Raga, Anurag. Bhav, but this Bhav is a stage of Prima, and then Ma Bhav, that's, that's the highest, Bhava. And, and when they come to this Ma Bhav, they get a sense of oneness. It's also Nitya Yuram, or, or see, I'm Krishna. They think they are Krishna at that moment in their madness. That's divine, the highest divine madness, mother. That, uh, mm. Of course, this is from Gopal Champa again. We have heard from the Vrajavas is going to Kurukshetra. In Gopal Shampu, you have the gopis going to, to, going to Kurukshetra to meet Krishna. So, and that's very interesting. <laughs> we cannot imitate what they are doing with this. They are going to Kurukshetra to see Krishna. The gopis had their eyes closed. They were walking with closed eyes, but then then they opened their eyes and they fainted. Then they walked fast and then they cried. So, so this is how they went to Kurukshetra, from Vrindavan to Kurukshetra. They were crying, they were fainting, closing their eyes, walking. So, but they were filled with a, a longing to see Krishna. A moment seemed to be a kalpa for them. Yugaitam nimeshena, nimeshena, Lord Chaitanya said. That, that's a moment, 12 years. And they were thin, with unkept bodies, wearing old, worn, worn out clothing. It's interesting. That you don't find in the Bhagavatam. That uh, they did not keep themselves nicely. They were so absorbed internally in separation. Their hair was falling over their faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Krishna at Kurukshetra saw the gopis and he saw he saw them in this condition. Krishna became dizzy and took support of Udav. Weeping for a long time, he did not understand when he, when he had come, why he came, what he was doing, what happened. He forgot everything when he saw the gopis. That's interesting. 
When they glanced at his limbs on that long night, how can it be described? When the four eyes of, the, of, the, of Krishna and the gopis met quickly, his eyes and the gopis became stunned. Who can the, describe the transformations of love that the gopis filled with thirst because of the fire of long separation achieved on seeing him? That, uh, mm -hmm. There are further descriptions, but they are, yeah, without going to the details of the Bhagavatam, it's not so appropriate to, be, to go through them. But at Kurukshetra, in summary, Krishna was, when he met the gopis, he spoke to them, Atma Gyan. <laughs> he did that also to the gopis during the Rasa dance. He told the gopis when they came, being attracted to the flute, his flute, he said, why did you come? Why did you come? You should be with your husbands now. <laughs> it's dangerous to come to the forest all these animals. So go back to your home. You don't have to come here. That uh, You just meditate on me. I'm in your heart. And when you think of me in your heart, I'm also there. That, uh, so need, no need to come here. That, uh, of course, the gopis did not like it. But here he says the same thing to the gopis. He, he, give, he gives them this Atma Gyan. You just meditate on me. But then he says to the gopis, in separation you were absorbed in me, thinking of me, and I appeared in your mind. I was there. But you were thinking that it was just your meditation. That, that's interesting. But finally, the Gopi is understood. Yes. It's the same Krishna. They had captured Krishna in their hearts. That, uh, and it's the same Krishna. <laughs> who reciprocates that uh, way it consoled gopis but when Udav before was sent to Vrindavan to console Nanda Maharaj Mother Yasoda and he saw them in this condition seemingly suffering of separation Udav said, there is one verse in the Bhagavatam there, where Udav said, I'm very happy to see you in that condition. <laughs> he was very happy to see them suffering like that. That's interesting. It means the suffering is bliss. The feelings of separation is the highest bliss. That... Uh, and that was also exhibited by Lord Chaitanya. These feelings of separation is the highest. And that's the whole anti aldila of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya exhibiting this Mabhav, these feelings of separation. It is the greatest ecstasy that... Uh, so... That, of course, when Krishna said to the gopis, you meditate on me, because when before Udav was sent to Vrindavan, before he went even to see Nanda Maharaja Mother Yasoda in the evening, he arrived in Vrindavan at twilight. 
the sun was going down. And the Vrindavan was in a very joyful, if so, a very joyful Vrindavan. He saw the cows and a noise of milking the cows and the birds and the parrots flying and and the, the gopis were singing songs about Krishna and it was very beautiful. But then he, he went to see Nanda Maharaj. So Aracharya say that there are two levels here. When he arrived, then uh, Udav saw that Krishna's Aprakat Lila unman, unmanifested pastimes that uh, this Aprakat Lila, it is said Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. In that Aprakat Lila, Krishna is still in Vrindavan. And that's the same Lila which is going on in Goloka Vrindavan, Aprakat. That, uh, but then you have the Prakrat, then you enter the Prakrat li li Lila, where Krishna where they have feelings of separation and Krishna is immature or dvarka. That, but factually, the, this manifested pastime where they feel separation is even more ecstatic. That, uh, that's, uh, of course, Krishna sent Udav to Vrindavan because Udav, he, he was very learned. He looked like Krishna. That uh, he had prema, love for Krishna. But still, Krishna sent him to Vrindavan because Udav had to learn something. He had to learn about Vracha prema. That a higher form of love for Krishna, the love of the Vajravasis, that uh, and Udav learned at the end he became very humble. He just wanted to be a grass in Vrindavan. That, uh, but yes. But that Aprakat Lila, that it is said during the sep by these feelings of separation, you can enter this Aprakat Lila. That uh, that's the way to, the key to enter it. But Nana and Yasoda did not enter it. The Gopas they entered. Apakat Lila, it is said. Well, the, the Gopas, the coward boys, they entered. But, but that is also, when, when I was studying these things and presented at the Bhaktivedanta students, I always remember Nectar of Instruction, text 8, Rupa Goswami, where he says, yes, one should chant 24 hours a day this, this nectarian names of Krishna. That uh, in the purport, Srila speaks about different stages, uh, Varanadasa and, and Smaranavasta. He says there are five, five levels of Smaranavasta of remembering Krishna. When you chant the holy name in the beginning, sometimes you remember Krishna, sometimes not. 
In the beginning, I could chant 16 rounds and not thinking one more mantra of Krishna. Just mechanical and that. But the idea is if you become purified in your heart, and sometimes you think of Krishna, sometimes not. And you cannot force it. Huh? It's, it's, it's the, the loving affection that you make that makes Krishna reveal himself, that helps you to think of him. Sometimes you think of Krishna, sometimes not. But then Srila Prabhupada said, then the periods that you forget Krishna, they should come shorter. The periods you think of Krishna should become longer. <laughs> and then at a certain moment, when we get nishta, liberation, because that's nishta, you think continuously of Krishna while you chant that. And then you become attracted to Krishna. Ruchi comes. And then Ashakti. What is this Ashakti? Ashakti, Srila Prabhupada says, is transcendental television in the heart. Hmm? We have a television set, but it's now broken. We must repair it, come to this level of Ashakti. And then, when, when you come to that point of continuously chanting, then it becomes deeper. And then Krishna starts to reveal himself. And the first thing he reveals is, is form. His beautiful form. And then he reveals his sweetness. His sweetness. And then after, Srila Prabhupada says in a lecture, and then after his sweetness, then he, he reveals the environment. You see, Krishna is in a spiritual environment. You start to see the Kalpa Vriksha trees, and you start to see the parrots flying. That so the holy dam is manifested. And then Krishna reveals that Krishna is not alone. There is associate. And then is associate. And then Krishna reveals his pastimes. That's where you enter this aprakat lila. When I read this, this presentation, this but what um, Shiva Goswami writes in Gopal Champo, how does he get this, this information? Because probably he self-realized he enters that aprakat lila. That's interesting. <laughs> That, uh, you know, yeah. So they give us very valuable information, like Vishwanatsaka Vakti Thakur. If you read his comments and you think of how does he know all this? Because Krishna tells him. Krishna, yeah. So that's this Aprakat Lila, which is his, which we attain this. A shakti you can only attain by Krishna's mercy. That, uh, that that's interesting. His experiences of the Vajshavasis. My aim was to give you an idea of what it would be to be in such a consciousness. We cannot Imagine it, we cannot understand it, but we can get a glimpse, and that is what I try to present with this seminar. A glimpse with the, in the Back to Vedanta course, we go a little deeper in all these aspects. But uh, here and there, I try to pull out the nectar and present it to you. Hare Krishna. Any comments, questions that uh
Yes, ma'am. Uh, you were explaining also when the devotees came and meditating. Yeah. And then Krishna told people that you also meditate, but now that Krishna is possible, we meditate. We meditate Krishna and meditate Krishna there. Yeah, the, the thing is, it's like, like the holy name. The holy name is Krishna, but we don't realize it. But of course, here Krishna speaks about how he reveals himself to the gopis and reciprocates with their pure love. That, uh, but it is not that we force ourselves in meditation. Imagine seeing a form of Krishna that it is Krishna. That's not. It, it, it is revealed by Krishna. That, and, that, and I think many devotees may have that experience, but very short. It's Krishna encouraging us. Sometimes, yeah, he does that. He does that. I had a few times that I had ecstatic moments. Ma. But then, yeah. It's very rare that it happens. But interesting is, you remember this moment. That uh, how Krishna reciprocated. And, and, and the short ecstasy you were feeling. And then you go back to that. And it's encouraging. Because this experience give, gives you faith. Gives you faith. That... Uh, yeah, of course, the, those who are advanced, they may have such experiences, but they don't speak about it. That, uh, and because that's also in the Bhagavatam, if you speak about it, you'll lose the realization. This is confidential. It's confidential. That, uh, mm -hmm. Like Gopal Champa, Jiva Goswami does not say these are my realizations, but where does he get the information? <laughs> it is like he was there, so he must have experienced it. That, uh, because we may not forget Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, and so on, that uh, they were. They came from the spiritual world. That uh, very, very important. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So many of our acharyas are not ordinary persons. Person, in, no, certainly not. But, uh, good. Thank you. Something else? Yes. <coughs> You just, you just recently had Rath Yatra, and um, since you mentioned that gopis went to Kurukshetra, Tula's eyes, whatever, the uh, open eyes that they had in the monasteries. So when they arrived and they saw that they smelled Krishna as a smell, but Krishna is it's Krishna's smell, but this is not Krishna. And uh, so, my, or if you can elaborate more, what's the connection between? Krishna Vrindavan, is this inseparable? Is it Krishna also Vrindavan is not Krishna? Or, I mean, he's Krishna but not Krishna? Well, because they wanted to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan, this is his famous verse. Hmm. So what is, the, what, is the, what is the role of Vrindavan in this whole Krishna? Yeah, like I said, you have uh, Aprakat and, pra and, and Prakat Lila. These are two different concepts. In the Aprakat Lila, Krishna does not live in Davan. When, but in the Prakat Lila, he lives in Vrindavan. And 
So the gopis want to bring him back to Vrindavan. And that's the essence of Ratha Yatra. They, they didn't want this Ashvarya Krishna. They, they, you could say the gopis, yeah, Krishna is in Mathura. Why, why did, they, did they not go to Mathura? No, they want, they want Vrindavan Krishna. They want Krishna in Vrindavan, in that mood as a coward boy. And that can only in Vrindavan. And that, and, and that, and they want to bring him back. And that, uh, so that is part of the Prakrat Lila pastime, where there are feelings of separation, that strong feelings of separation, which is the highest. That, uh, if you want to know, learn, to learn more about that, then there is the book of. Uh, the bankment of separation from this Gorgovinda Maharaj. Very beautiful book. Describes all the details. That, uh, but uh, that's above my level. I cannot speak on these things. <laughs> that, uh, okay. Interesting. That's something else. Yes, please. This is mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. Nectar of Devotion, that uh, in that section about parental love, there you find this list that I've mentioned, Yasoda, Nanda, Roini, Elder Gopis, whose sons were stolen by Brahma, Devaki, the co-wives of Devaki, Kunti, Vasudev, Sonipani Muni. So this is the list, the list of all these personalities who enjoyed parental affection. It's nectar of the bush. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Shantra Shimon Bhagavatam Ki. Shila Prabhupada Ki.